Hello everyone, I hope your day is going great. The deathbed companions are quite elusive, but we do get some quite interesting information on them. Not too much, but enough that we can start to figure out the details of their origins. But, it seems to me very much that the deathbed companions have been sidelined in favour for more interesting topics like Mikola, the DLC, and the Glomide Queen. But in today's video, we are not going to do that. We are not going to sideline these characters. Instead, I'm going to talk about a secret that I think I have found. It may seem like speculation, and to a degree it is, but I'm not just pulling this out my arse. There is evidence that I will state in the video, and there is reasonings, logical reasons, why I do believe this to be the case. If you do end up enjoying the video, I'm not going to ask you now, but if you do at the end of the video find you have enjoyed the video please consider leaving a like and subscribe as it greatly and truly helps the channel just before i actually properly let you get into the video i just want to say i'm very very sorry for the lack and inconsistency of uploads the last few months the main reason being really really busy but there's also the fact that my controller has over the last few months decided to just start drifting I need to get a new one, but they are very, very expensive. It's so hard to even press the record button on the software. You see, I record my audio and footage on the PlayStation, so it's really not helpful and it can be such a pain. And honestly, it makes me sort of dread having to record audio because it is that painful and takes that much longer. Anyways, I won't hold your ears hostage any longer. I hope you do enjoy the video, and I'll let you get to it. The first time we actually see Fear and any hint of the Deathbed Companions is actually in the very first cutscene where we are introduced to the Tarnished. The Tarnished in this case being Fear. Fear is located inside a bed using the strength and warmth of champions to try and resurrect a reverent noble. Doesn't really tell us much, but we just know she is fear of the deathbed companions. Of this is very important because it labels the deathbed companions as a group, which is the first time it's labeled as such and tells us a lot off the get go. The deathbed companions are as interesting and more as you might think. We know from a certain Ash Summon that the deathbed companions' origins exist within the lands between. A perfumer who helped the misbegotten and those misfortuned is labelled as the origin of the deathbed companions. Or at least that is what some people say. Now, something that is really peculiar about this is the fact that the deathbed companions are intrinsically linked with death, death root, and the death prince, aka Godwin the Golden, son of Queen Marika the Eternal and Godfrey, first Elden Lord. What is even more strange than this though, is the fact that Deathroot became a large problem in the lands between as the Shattering. Godwin was the catalyst for the Shattering. His death led America to spiral and shatter the Elden Ring. But how does this make any sense when we know the Deathbed Companions are a sect of Tarnished who left possibly hundreds of years before the Shattering? This all but confirms the fact that Deathroot and Death, as we see with Godwin, was around pre-shattering. This opens up many a line of questioning from how did the Deathbed Companions get this power? How did they use it? What was Death Blight and Death in the sense of Godwin pre-shattering? What was it? We see a lot of golden colours located around Death Blight, especially in the Deep Root Depths where Godwin is exactly located in his colossal octopus form. It makes you wonder, perhaps it wasn't so golden, perhaps a long time ago it wasn't as contagious. Maybe this golden lineage from Godwin tainted death, making it so. Fear and the Deathbed Companions seem to use this death in such a controlled manner, whereas now it's almost like refined chaos, only this refined chaos is fleeting and 
looks to be at an end. Chaos is, after all, chaos. It can be controlled for a time, but eventually, like an elastic band, it'll snap right back at you. It makes you wonder, how did it become like this? After all, death is a natural part of life. At least it was until it was plucked from the Elden Ring by Queen Marika the Eternal. But there's something else interesting that can pop up from this, and it has everything to do with the DLC. Elden Ring's DLC has been mostly coveted to be about Mikola being inside Mikola's dream, focusing on that. But, as pointed out by some people, if you look to the back, the tree looks very similar to being consumed by Death Blight. Now, I'm a bit up in the air what this could be. To me, this could either be the Ghost Flame, it could be the Lamp Light, or, or, which is more likely, Death Blight. The Death Blight may be consuming this tree. And if, if the speculation is true, and this is a long, long time ago in the past, this would also lead into and explain Death Blight in the past. It would give us an example, as we are never actually told when it started to occur. That is just a misconception that everyone has thought up in their head. We are never told when the Death Blight started. There is only speculation. Now that we've tackled the origins of death and how it might have come to be and how it might have existed pre-shattering, we need to go on to the fact of how the deathbed companions were able to harness death. And I think it's quite simple actually. I believe there is a little hint that we briefly talked about earlier. We are told of a perfumer who was said to be the origins of the deathbed companions. What if this perfumer somehow worked and fought for Godfrey? and in that pursuit found death blights and with this death blight managed to give comfort to those in their dying moments. Makes sense and then perhaps she left the lands between with Godfrey taking her knowledge with her starting a new civilization after the war in the badlands and becoming the mother of a death blight civilization one whose very foundations were built on the power of death blight that she found long ago in some unknown place and at some unknown time. So is it any wonder that when fear comes to the lands between, her goal is to make a new prince of death, to create a new order, one built upon the principles of death? Her fascination and kindness towards those who live in death is really peculiar, except now we know that she is from a civilization where this was probably very, very normal. You've got to think, her job as a deathbed companion was to bring exalted nobles back to life with the warmth and strength of champions. Now, that's basically those who live in death, so she's very familiar with this concept, which is not the same for those who inhabit the lands between in the present day inside of our playthrough. You could also go with the theory that it was always this chaotic, that death has always been a force of nature that was perpetually lying upon a rubber band, but I don't think so. But you never know, it could be. We see in Fear's Mist a spell that we can obtain from her and her questline, that she has refined this death or perhaps her people have over the centuries and formed it into sorceries which is something that I find very interesting. I don't know if it's just me but this whole refining death and using it reminds me very heavily of Laurentius instead of Dark Souls 1. He talks about the fascination of fire that some people have and how that fascination can lead you to hold fire in your very hands. The fascination is because it's something we cannot touch. Could it be the same with this? We know From Software likes to take inspiration from their previous games. What if the fact is that this is another reference to Dark Souls 1? And the fact that, although yes, they can try and hold it in their very hands, true control is impossible. So everyone, that is the end of the video. If you did enjoy the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. And 
it tells me that you're enjoying this style of content and to continue to make more. Alternatively, if you don't want to like or subscribe, let me know down below what you found you didn't like. Let me know how I could improve. Don't be a dickhead about it, just let me know and I will try to improve for the next one. I won't hold your ears hostage any longer. I really do hope you enjoy the video and yeah, that's about it. May you find your worth in the waking world. Goodbye everyone.